another video yeah i'm gonna try to stay consistent so today about to do top top what the hell top five misconceptions about islam i'm pretty excited to see these videos i think i'm not 100 percent sure i think i've done this video before on my second channel but that was two years ago and i completely forgot about every single thing that i did and i'm trying to redo these videos again although i think that there are some people who did copied and re-uploaded it somewhere i don't really remember i think there was some stuff like that going on but anyways we're gonna check check it out and see if i remember anything if you guys like comment subscribe <laughs> that was horrible check me out on paypal or on, or on patreon through paypal when you donate you can leave a text and your request takes priority or if you want you just comment down below what videos you'd like me to watch and i'll get to that as soon as possible but for paypal it takes for your priority so let's check out the video top five misconceptions about islam number five islam was spread by the sword <laughs> There is no record in history that shows people being forced by sword point to convert to Islam. Muslims ruled Arabia for over 1,400 years, yet today, there are over 14 million Arabs who are Coptic Christians. No. If the Muslims had used a sword, there would not have been a single Arab who have remained Christian. Another example is India. That's true. Muslims ruled India for over a thousand years. If they had wanted, they had the power to convert each and every non-Muslim. Now, wait, so... Who had, wait, so the, I know the English had India. So did the English fight the Arabs for India? Or did the Indians take back their country and then the English took it over? Because I, I know England took over India for a couple of years and they took a lot of stuff from India. Although I remember reading an article that India kind of told the Queen that they won their jewelry and diamonds and stuff back but they ain't gonna get that for sure but anyway let's continue but le let me know in the comments did the english fight the arabs for india or did the indians win the country back and then the english took over or was the english there before the arabs no but that wouldn't make sense either wait let me know let's continue no India to Islam, but today more than 80% of the population of India are non-Muslims. All these non-Muslim Indians are bearing witness today that Islam Hindu. was not spread by the sword. If one considers a small number of Muslims who initially spread Islam to the west all the way from Spain and Morocco and into the east from India and China, one would realize that such a small group of people could not force others to be members of a religion against their will. It is also interesting to note that when the Mongols... Oh, and also remember that um, Christians kind of forcefully converted people as well. So that was it. Was it the Crusaders or whatever? They were forcefully. If you wasn't a Christian, at least from what I've read, don't quote me on that. No. Conquered large portions of the Islamic Empire. They themselves embraced the religion of Islam. Number four, Muslims believe in a different God. Some non-Muslims incorrectly believe that Muslims worship a God different than Jews and Christians. This might be due to the fact that Muslims refer to God as Allah. In actuality, Muslims worship the God of Noah, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. The word Allah is simply the Arabic word for Almighty God. The word Allah is very unique. Nothing else except God can be called Allah. The term has no plural or gender. This shows its uniqueness when compared with the word God. Now, that's actually true. It's actually really true. And I just thought of that right now, which is weird. Because we call the Greek gods, you know, the, Indi the um, Hindu gods, and this type of stuff. But with this word, it's just one word, and it's for just their god. So... I just realized that until today. That's weird. But then, yeah, because we 
call him Yahweh, but the other religion, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a it's one word for just him, for just their god, not him, their god. Interesting. No. It can be made plural, gods or feminine goddess. Christian Arabs also refer to God as Allah. Number three. Really? Muslims don't believe in Jesus. Many people are amazed to find out that according to Muslim belief, Jesus is one of the greatest messengers of God. One cannot be Muslim without believing in the virgin birth and the many miracles of Jesus. I kind of find that a little bit hard to believe. Not that I'm cool, not that I'm saying that it's not true, but personally, from what I've experienced, what I've seen, I've seen a lot of these of people from that religion, especially, kind of denounce Jesus. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe there are a few of them that don't really believe in it. I, I can't personally say, but. From what I've seen is like they kind of spit when they say his name in a sense correct me if I'm wrong but Jesus is also mentioned in many verses of the Quran and is often used as an example of good virtue and character however the main difference between Christianity and Islam is that Muslims do not believe that Jesus was God or the son of God Muslims believe that Jesus was a prophet and a messenger of God number two Muslim women are oppressed. One of the most disturbing misconceptions is the negative portrayal of women in Islam. Namely, that Islam degrades and oppresses women. This misconception is due to the negative culture and traditions that people all over the world still hold on to. Unfortunately, these traditions sometimes overshadow the Islamic teaching and people from the outside believe that the traditions and Islam are the same when in reality they are not. For example, women in pre-Islamic Arabia had almost no rights. They were viewed as objects and were constantly humiliated. Their purpose was nothing more than to obey men and have children for him. When a female baby was born, it was considered a disgrace to the family and they were often buried alive. Islam brought positive change to Arabia. People who embraced Islam had to let go of these harmful cultural practices and women were finally given the rights and respect that they deserved. For every male convert to Islam today, four females convert to the religion. Nobody will convert to religion that oppresses them. The truth is that Islam provides women with the rights they deserve to be successful in this world and the next. Number 1. Muslims are terrorists and extremists. This is by far the biggest misconception of Islam, given unfairly by stereotyping and the public image that the media gives. Has anyone else noticed how when a specific group of people attack another group of people, it is labeled as a hate crime, but when a Muslim opens fire on anybody, it is quickly regarded as terrorism. Many political dictators and officials or extremist groups use the name of Islam as a strategy to gain followers and attention when many of their practices go against the teachings of Islam. Islam does not support terrorism under any circumstances. Terrorism goes against every principle in Islam, and if a Muslim engages in terrorism, he is not following Islam. Islam prohibits Muslims from attacking or killing any innocent person. Allah says, whoever kills a person unjustly, it is as though he has killed all mankind. In Quran chapter 5 verse 32. Okay, so this is a very informative video. Um, what does it mean by um, unjustly? He is right when, I mean, it's kind of sad when a group of people do certain things. So other like what happened with um, the teacher. Mm, I'm not going to talk about that. The video, hopefully you liked it. Um, Check us out on Patreon or PayPal for PayPal. When you donate, you can leave your request and it takes priority, or you can just leave it in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.